Hi guys! This video is all about second year medical school. The subjects that we cover, a sample of our lectures, I'll show you my handwritten notes, uh, what's inside our textbooks, a sample of our exams, and also how I survived second year med. And I'll share with you also some of my old blog posts when I was a second year med student six years ago, yes. And if you're new here, my name is Aura. I'm already a doctor. Please consider subscribing if you want to see videos related to med school and beyond because hopefully I'll be starting my residency training soon. So uh, hospital and health related vlogs are coming up, fingers crossed. Anyway, let's get started. What are the major subjects for second year med? I want to log in again to my Lectorio account to show you. By the way, my laptop is right here. Yep. So if you see me looking down, then that's because I'm looking at my laptop. Oops, tabing it. Hi, game. So Lectorio, I already featured Lectorio in my other video about first year med school subjects. Now, this is about second year. And Lecturio is for pre-meds and med students. It's an online learning platform with video lectures, question bank, and spaced repetition quizzes. So yeah, guys, check it out. Use this to self-study, supplement your learning, and even study on the go. So yeah, second year med for the Filipinos, it's mostly preclinical and clinical subjects. The preclinical subjects that we cover include microbiology, pharmacology, and pathology. So we'll start with microbio. Micropara, we call this micropara because it's microbiology plus parasitology. So this is where we study bacteria, viruses, fungi, parasites, and prions, how these microorganisms cause disease, and how we can study them so that we will know how to treat, intervene, and even prevent disease. Let's take a look at the intro to microbio. There are a lot of concepts, a lot of terms that you have to become comfortable with. And I'm so thankful because we covered a lot of microbi in pre-med biology as well. So I was already familiar with the scientific names, with uh, at least the disease that they cause, their life cycle, what they look like in the microscope. They weren't completely alien to me, but we still studied them in depth in med school. So it was still very challenging. So let's take a look at one of our lectures, maybe viruses. Yeah, I want to show you retroviruses, which includes the HIV. We start at the top with the attachment process in which the virus through its envelope proteins binds to specific receptors, in this case, um, CD4 and other cell differentiated markers, chemokine receptors and co-receptors on the surface of the CD4 T lymphocyte. The attachment is the first part and then- So yeah, in med school, we study these organisms up to the cellular, subcellular level. So that's micropara. So now let's take a look at pathology. Pathology is the study of disease. I like to say that first year med is about studying how our body works and second year med is studying how our body fails to work. So our cells have different functions so that we can protect ourselves from disease, but if it becomes too much, then they won't be able to adapt, then they will manifest the disease. It can even cause neoplasm, it can be benign or malignant. Bakit ako nagle-lecture? I'm not supposed to lecture. So anyway, this is what we study in patho. This is just the basic principles. So let's take a look. Proto-oncogenes, cell cycle, cyclin D, RAS protein, tumor suppressor genes. Right? Okay, so let's take a look at one of the lectures, uh, malignant neoplasm. Look at this picture here. We also studied this in first year, but we studied the normal version in histology, right? So you have to be familiar with how it looks like when it's normal so that you can appreciate what it looks like when it's pathologic. So this is pathologic. Without a good foundation, you won't be able to realize that as quickly. So that's why it's important to study well on your first year. Hi guys, sorry, but I have to say that. Because you're gonna need a lot of basic concepts from first year in order to appreciate what you will study in second year and beyond. So let's try to take the quiz. In Lecturio, you can take quizzes to check if you're really learning. I did not watch the video. <laughs> uh, malignant tissues have more cells in emphase, directly leading to all of the following except. Keme, 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 keme. Hypochromatia, because it's supposed to be hyperchromatia. Correct. <laughs> Pleomorphism means ano, change in chemi. Cells varying in size and shape. Let's check the other choices. Yes. Yeah. Basic. 
All of the following are associated with malignant neoplasia, except yes, yes, yes. No, because it's supposed to be poorly demarcated tumors. And I'm sure. Yes. Oh, guys, I did not cheat. Promise. It's because these are basic concepts, okay? So don't be too impressed. Like anyone beyond second year should be able to answer that. I hope, guys, naman. So, okay. So that's the that's just one of the topics in the basic pathology, cellular pathology. And then we will cover the systems, everything that goes wrong in each system. For example, in HEMA, in the blood, there are so many diseases of the blood, red blood cells and white blood cells. And I remember reading this from cover to cover in the patho textbook and I was not able to absorb anything. Like I wasted a lot of my time, a whole night I dedicated to reading. But I learned eventually that it's because I was just passively learning. I just read it. Like, no quizzing myself, no flashcards, no outlines, no taking down notes, no synthesis. So, it was no use. I learned the hard way. So, that's it for patho. Now, let's move on to my favorite subject. Favorite because the professors were really, really good. I love them. And my notes are in the subject. Pharma. Pharma is the study of drugs pharmacologic interventions to disease again we study it up to the cellular subcellular level so that we can appreciate it i'm going to show you a diagram here this one we studied this extensively in first year in fisho and in biochem i think so for example these are the receptors like the alpha 2 receptor norepinephrine and serotonin receptors and those receptors are the sites of action of the specific drugs like fluoxetine, desipramine, mirazepine. So we have to know this because we have to understand like what happens if this receptor is blocked. Then the whole pathway will be blocked. The, the, the neurotransmitter will not be transmitted. Wait lang, hindi ko kaya mag-lecture, guys. Okay, so that's pharma. I love pharma. And uh, I even created a blog post in 2015 about how I studied for pharma. And I'm going to give you an overview. Here you go. How to study pharmacology in med school. Number one is write organized drug outlines to see the big picture. So this is an example of my outlines. It's in my notebook. I wrote it myself and it helped with uh, memory retention when you write it yourself. Therefore, please don't ask for my handwritten notes, guys, because it won't be helpful for you, I promise. Damot naman, damot naman eh, doktora. Damot po niya. Trust me, everything that you need to know is already available to you, and it's up to you to, bleh, it's up to, you to synthesize that knowledge for your own gain. Okay? Ang damot po niya. Ano ba yan? Number two, make up your own mnemonics and share it. Number three, rely also on your visual memory, which is, again, why it's important to have your own notes. And you can also quiz yourself using smart flashcards. Second year was the time I discovered these smart adaptive digital flashcards that feature confidence-based repetition techniques. You can try Brainscape, Quizlet, Anki. There are so many flashcard apps available for free. And guys, if you're in second year right now, uh, maybe you can work out a system for you and your classmates to come up with class flashcards. Instead of uh, putting in so much effort in creating new class transcription notes, it's better to establish a way for everyone to learn actively. I suggest just uh, consider making flashcards for the whole class. And number five is go over your notes right after the exam, which is something that I asked you about in a previous video. And a lot of you admitted that you don't like to go over your notes because it's annoying, right? That you will see your mistakes and you'd rather just relax. But for me, personally, I always make sure to go over my notes. I encircle the high yield topics, the things that were asked because I feel like they will be asked again. And if I made a mistake, I make sure to read about it so that I will not commit the same mistake. And it helps to do it with another classmate so that you can recall the questions together. And don't mind the others who will tease you for being so grade conscious because it's just another effective way to learn. So, haya amo sila. Haya amo sila. Okay, so that's the pharma. And uh, those are the preclinical subjects in second year. So now we switch to the clinical subjects. And basically, we have only the overview of these clinical subjects in second year because we tackle them in more detail in third year. But for second year, 
the most important thing we learned, I would say, is the basics of history taking and physical examination. I'll show you one of her textbooks. If you're gonna ask me for a digital copy, guys, just please Google. You might find something. This is just the pocket guide. We had a bigger book. We covered this in our medicine subject. It was so exciting because this was when we learned for the first time, well, at least for me, how to use the BP apparatus, how to use the stethoscope, how to do this, 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 and this. That's a physical exam maneuvers. And you will learn about those in second year med. So this was also the first time we encountered patients in the wards. We would interview them and come up with a case presentation and we would present it in class. And our preceptors would really nitpick on each and every little detail. It was a lot of work. So imagine on top of all the things you have to study for your other subjects, there are also other requirements such as group reports, paperwork. So that's part of the challenge of second year. <laughs> I survived. Kaya rin yan, guys. All these other subjects are mostly clinical already, but we covered them like the normal of these subjects in second year and the abnormal of these subjects in third year. So in Lictorio, you can use this QBank so that you can test yourself and learn actively and really drill in the concepts before your graded exam. I wish, I really wish I had done this in med school. Trust me, for my USMLE, I basically did questions, thousands of questions, and that's how I prepared for the actual test. So, okay, what is this? Oh my god, HIV. Okay, we can zoom in so that the font will be bigger and we can protect our eyes from too much strain. So a 28-year-old gravid one per zero woman, 16 weeks, AOG, prenatal care. Okay, so what is the most appropriate diagnostic test to check if she can transmit the virus to her baby? And I forgot. Honestly, I forgot. I think it's probably PCR. I don't know. I forgot. What is letter A? But something like that. Anyway, I'll just answer letter A. I'm guessing. And it's wrong. <laughs> it's letter E. It's I'm always like this. I'm always second guessing myself. But anyway, of course, it's PCR. So you can see an explanation after whether you got it correct or not. And you'll see the explanation why the other answers are wrong. Very helpful. Number two. Okay, long question stem, so I would look at the picture first. <laughs> That's bad, but I already know what this is. Just because I just took my step one exam. <laughs> what organism has infected this patient? My initial answer is still my final answer. It's letter A. And I want to rule out the others, but I don't know how. I'm just sure it's letter A and it's letter A. <laughs> yes. Yes. Anyway, that's a sample of our exams. And now, I want to show you a sample of my old blog posts. This video is getting long, but I feel like it's important also for you guys to realize that I went through this too. <laughs> okay, let's do it. July 21, 2013. Come find me. Come find me in the med library during school hours, probably fixing my notes or cramming a homework. This was our library in PLM. Or in a nearby boutique coffee, probably on weekends when I'm doing some catch-up reading. I spent my weekends here. Holly's Coffee was in Taft. It's closed now. In a 24-hour fast food where everyone else goes when they need to be awake, he would stay there until 2 a.m., 3 a.m. Look, the crew person here is already cleaning up and we're still there studying. We were the only customers at this time. And I know it's controversial recently on Twitter that um, med students or students are not supposed to study in fast foods, but I'm I was guilty and we had no other choice. And guys, this was 2 a.m. It wasn't peak hour. We were keeping the fast food alive. <laughs> Excuses. And lastly, in my room, snuggling with my puppy, where I spend the most regretful nights sleeping too early and waking too late. I haven't been gone for almost a month. You just didn't know where to find me. PS exam week coming up.
No comments. And in 2014, they all said studying med will take too long, but honestly, once you're in it, days come by just like that. Yes, yeah, yeah. Just like that, I'm done with second year med. The last two weeks had been a blur, mostly due to our body clocks that operated independently from nature's night and day signals. I asked around and most of us survived in this routine. So this was my day in a life during second year med finals week. Shiftings and then finals week. I'll be home before lunchtime, exhausted from that morning's exam. I will eat and relax for an hour or so, or like three hours. Sleep until 5, 6, or 7 p.m. Study non-stop until dawn. Squeeze in a quick nap and shower. Go back to school by 7.30 a.m. for another exam. I can't believe we willingly subjected ourselves to that. Um, I don't know what you can pick up from this video. Maybe, again, just to emphasize, take everything one step at a time. Remember, before I was a second year med student, I was a first year. And before I got into first year, I did my NMAT. I defended my thesis. I also had trouble with org chem and physics and all my undergrad subjects in bio. And I was also torn between what pre-med course to take. And in high school, I also struggled with balancing my ACADs and my extracurriculars. Basically, wherever you are in your journey right now, whatever hurdle you're trying to overcome, you're just being prepared for the next battle that you're about to face. Again, we are all pursuing a long-term goal and we all need grit. And before you know it, you'll be done. You'll be done with second year med. You'll be done with your clerkship, internship, your boards, your residency, and then you'll be practicing as a doctor or not, whatever. Thank you guys for watching. Good luck incoming and current second year med students. Kung kinaya namin, kaya nyo rin. Thank you and I'll see you soon.